I bet when you read the title of this video, you thought to yourself, oh great, another video showing me how bad my triple CC is compared to coordinated rank 1 RMPs. It's true, compositions like RMP rely heavily on setups in order to score kills. But what you need to understand is no matter how face roll or ridiculously easy you think a composition may be, there is still certain levels of setup involved in order to play optimally and give you the highest chance of victory. It's these simple concepts that are often the ones preventing you from climbing, and this is a trend we've seen throughout our extensive VOD reviews. To help, we've managed to come up with four common mistakes that you're probably making during your setups. Welcome to Game Losing Mistakes. When you break a setup down, it can be simplified into two main points, damage and crowd control. In fact, in order to be successful, you need a harmony of both. Crowd control without damage doesn't accomplish anything. Damage without crowd control means the damage that you're doing just gets healed up, which leads us to mistake number one, not combining damage and crowd control. Not understanding this is something that we commonly see. Take this user submitted game of a 2100 rated shadow play. Shadow play heavily relies on the Shadow Priest's psychic horror and silence as their main form of crowd control in order to set up kills. Shadow play is also what would be considered a rot comp, meaning you want to first get pressure and then go for crowd control after. Playing the clip, our Shadow Priest runs in and almost instantly looks to crowd control the enemy shaman. Now think about it for a second, where is the damage going to come from? Our priest has barely got his dots up onto the enemy melee, he doesn't void form, and he doesn't even use his power infusion. His allied warlock has two melee with every interrupt available shutting him down, not to mention the enemy still has full fleshcraft shields. Needless to say, the crowd control is used, but we just don't have the damage to complement it. Then moments later, they begin to get some pressure onto the enemy death knight, but now without their important crowd control, they're unable to capitalize on that pressure to then force defensives or even score a kill. On the flip side of things though, we have our rank 1 shadow play. Here what we see is the shadow priest waiting until his team first of all already has pressure and then combines the crowd control simultaneously with burst damage. We see a psychic horror followed up with a silence and then a mind games, which manages to score a kill shortly after. Having to build up initial pressure before going for crowd control to further extend that momentum is only the case for certain compositions. Compositions like Rogue Mage want to already have the crowd control secured before they look to then deal damage. We've seen what happens when you throw crowd control without having any damage, but what about the other way around? Well, here's a great example. Our 1700 warrior puts his pedal to the metal and charges straight onto the enemy shadow priest, popping his necro banner and warbreaker. I think we all know how much damage this is capable of doing, but the problem here, there's no crowd control onto the enemy healer, meaning if he wanted, he can just easily heal through the damage or even blessing a protection to make his priest immune. Also, there is nothing onto the Shadow Priest. Without lockdown on your kill target, they're going to be able to freely kite, pop defensives they couldn't use otherwise in a stun, or even just peel you. So how do you think this plays out? Well, the enemy priest just pops Greater Fade, immunes everything, and runs away, despite our warrior more than likely doing 2x the Shadow Priest's health bar alone in this short period. Glancing at the composition of this user submitted clip, we see they're playing KFC with a Holy Paladin. Not the most meta composition by any means, but by simply using a freezing trap, hammer of justice, or even intimidating shout onto the holy paladin, and at the same time stunning the shadow priest with a storm bolt would have meant our KFC at the very least force of dispersion or the gladiator's medallion from the enemy paladin. Again, here we've got a 1800 ret warrior holy priest, much like our warrior from last game, they pop everything offensively almost instantly, and even manage to somehow force the bubble from the enemy retribution paladin. But just watch the enemy druid, he's able to just sit there and casually heal through the damage. Now consider this, our ret warrior had storm bolt, intimidating shout, and chastise. Any one of these three abilities thrown onto the enemy druid during our retribution paladin's 20 seconds of avenging wrath would have almost certainly forced a trinket. But then, the second our ret's wings are over, we finally get the first crowd control in the form of an intimidating shout, which the druid just sits through as there is now no damage coming out. However simple this concept seems to you, it's probably something you're still messing up in your games. Always remember, the key to any setup is damage combined with crowd control. Before we continue, we wanted to quickly take this time to remind you about Skill Capped. You watch our YouTube videos, but did you know that this is only a taster of what you get on our website? Our team of pro players have centuries of combined experience and have the exact game knowledge to teach you how to become a better player. Don't believe us? 
Well, over the past decade, we've helped over half a million players reach their rating goals, and we are so confident in your results that we offer a full money-back guarantee if you don't see the rating gains you're expecting. Now, for prices as low as only $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to all of our exclusive videos, and that is some pretty insane value since it means you'll be able to watch over 600 world-class guides, just like this one, for the same cost as a Twitch subscription. So if you want to take your gameplay to the next level, don't wait. Check out skillcap.com slash wow today. The second mistakes we see regarding setups is overusing and overcommitting your offensive cooldowns when they may not be needed. World of Warcraft Arena is a game of trades. The more efficient trades you make, the closer you get to winning the game. Understanding how much damage you need to do in order to force cooldowns is very important in any setup. Take this opener here from a 1700 rogue mage. They sap the enemy healer and open instantly on the shadow priest with literally every offensive cooldown imaginable. We've got combustion, shadow blades, shadow dance, and even echoing reprimand, all while in a smoke bomb. And in response, all the enemy shadow priest does is press trinket fade. But to be honest with you, he could have just simply pressed dispersion and nothing else. So in this one setup, our low rated rogue mage committed everything they have offensively. And in response, all the enemy team has had to do is use a gladiator's medallion and a 45 second cooldown defensive in the form of greater fade, nothing else, and the setup is over. Now our RMP is left with practically no big offensive cooldowns ready for their next setup. Remember what we said earlier, World of Warcraft is a game of trades. You shouldn't approach every setup that you do with the intent to kill. Instead, approach the setup by thinking how much you're going to have to use offensively in order to force a defensive cooldown from your opponent using as little as possible yourself. And this goes for every composition. You don't want to pop your whole offensive spellbook in that first setup, when you're just going to force the same defensive anyway. Top players always know and understand the amount of damage that they need to do in order to force a certain defensive from their enemy and continuously make these positive trades until the game is closed out. The third mistake more than likely causing problems with your setups is that you're not chaining your crowd control properly. Like we discussed in mistake number one, you're going to need the combination of damage and crowd control in order to get pressure. But how you extend on that pressure is by chaining your crowd control. Watch this game of an 1800 rated demon hunter Boomy Arsham coming up against a shadow play. Our team goes in and instantly starts on the enemy warlock. They get an imprison onto the restoration druid while they both pump damage. But there is no follow up crowd control, so once the druid comes out, he's able to get off a scenarian ward before the cyclone. This then enables him to sit the cyclone. As the cyclone is about to end, once again, nobody is in position to follow up. There's no Chaos Nova, no Cap Totem, no Recyclone, no in-cap Roar, nothing. Instead, the Druid gets a global off before he's then blanket beamed for half a second. So despite this ridiculous pressure coming out of the DH Boomy, the pressure isn't taking full effect because we're not getting the crowd control chains required. Next to Mission Return, the same issue comes to light. The Warlock drops low as we get a singular Cyclone onto the Druid. Again, nothing, there's no follow-up. So he comes out of the Cyclone and begins to heal up the pressure again. And then, after casting another what seems like 10 regrowths, the enemy Warlock is at a stable amount of health again. Before you guessed it, we get another singular Cyclone. Our team here had crazy pressure onto the Warlock throughout the whole entire clip, and even had crowd control onto the healer, but what prevented them from scoring a kill was their ability to chain the crowd control. Now let's compare this to a rank 1 team playing the same composition to see how much of a difference it makes when you chain your crowd control. Starting off, we get a root beam while they look to pressure the Feral, getting stopped on his follow-up Cyclone, the Boomy DH ensure they don't have any gaps by covering with a Fell Eruption, which then buys our Boomy enough time to land the Cyclone. This is then followed up perfectly with a Recyclone into an Imprison by the Demon Hunter. Unbelievably, the Feral doesn't die, but the chain is kept up by a low Cyclone onto the Feral. Regardless of what composition you play and what crowd control your composition has available, one thing remains the same. Your setups will be infinitely stronger if you talk about and chain your crowd control during your setups. Our fourth and final mistake is one that's very easy to overlook and is almost non-existent at the lower end of ratings. Cross crowd control. As we know, a basic setup involves damage onto your kill target and some form of crowd control onto the enemy healer. But what about that third player? Here, we got a user submitted clip from a low rated jungle cleave playing with a holy paladin, facing up against WPS. Let's watch their setup. We instantly get an intimidation stun onto the restoration shaman, while the feral opens with a rake stun onto the warrior. This is then followed up with a freezing trap. As there is zero crowd control onto the enemy shadow priest though, he's able to just fear both our DPS and then freely mass dispel their trap. 
So now our low rated jungle setup is instantly over and we're going to have to wait until the next freezing trap in order to create new pressure. And what did our low rated jungle force? Nothing. Let's rewind back to the start. How would you approach this setup? Well, our jungle opener was fine. We had the basics, a stun on our kill target and a freezing trap into stun on the healer. You could argue that the target selection is wrong and the Shadow Priest is better to focus, but that's beside the point currently. What needed to happen is we need some of our leftover crowd control to lock down the Shadow Priest and prevent the peels. This could be done in the form of a mighty bash from our Feral or a hammer of justice from our Paladin. Just making this one small adaptation and putting some crowd control onto the off target would make the setup clean and force the enemy to either have to commit Gladiator's medallions or the very least force them to use defensive cooldowns. Now though, let's see how a high rated jungle initiates a setup against the same enemy composition. This time though, our jungle is focusing the enemy Shadow Priest. Straight away, our Feral rake stuns the enemy warrior, not to go him though, but to help his team ensure cross crowd control. This is then followed up by an intimidation stun onto the Restoration Shaman, finally with a bash onto the Shadow Priest. Then we follow up with a freezing trap onto the Restoration Shaman and mind control onto the warrior. The off target, which is the warrior in this case, is completely out of the game. This prevents any peels like Intervene, War Banner, Intimidating Shout, or even Stormbolt. Creating this 3v1 scenario instantly forces the Trinket Greater Fade out of the Shadow Priest. And bonus points if you can guess what the Shadow is going to do next. Yes, he's going to cast Mass Dispel to try and get his Shaman out of the trap, of which is instantly stopped. But just compare this setup to our lower rated jungles, the act of covering their crowd control and just being aware of that third player allows them to force so many more defensives. What you need to be aware of is that cross crowd control isn't something you have to do perfectly every single time. In fact, most compositions don't even have the tools available to them in order to crowd control all enemies for every setup. What's important to take away from this is understanding the impact that third player on the enemy team is going to have to your setups and what you can do if anything to prevent it from happening. In a lot of cases, this can be as simple as just a kick to interrupt casted crowd control, off heals, or maybe even a mass dispel. But then for other compositions, you may have the crowd control or tools available to always make sure you cross crowd control that third player. Whatever composition you're playing, just remember the fact that you're facing three enemies, not two. Okay then, that just about wraps up today's guide. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for more guides to really give you that edge this patch, and all those that follow, be it arena or rated battlegrounds, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow. While you're at it, consider joining our Discord, which you can find in the video description below. As a website member, you can get access to the Ask a Pro channel, where you can get on-demand help with all of your PvP needs, no matter how big or small. As always though, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.